Welcome back to the channel. I've spent my entire week behind the wheel of this 2024 Ford Bronco Raptor. So the Bronco finally gets the Raptor treatment and it looks absolutely wonderful. Now this is very much an off-road oriented vehicle, but if you're like myself and you just want a daily driver that looks absolutely awesome and can go off-road if you need to, but you don't necessarily have the need, then the Bronco might actually be for you. So I'm gonna take you through like a little on-road you know, POV drive later on in the video. First, I'm gonna take you through the exterior, then we're gonna do the interior, and then of course, POV drive. Let's get right into it. All right, first up, we have the front end for the Ford Raptor. You can see how much ground clearance we have. You can get a good little view of the shocks and dampers there too. You are also gonna notice that I have a lot of orange accents around the vehicle. That's because we have the code orange pack here. So you'll notice it on the exterior a little bit as well on the interior. We also have these nice like orange colored daytime running LEDs and also just like a normal truck or any big truck, we have these three amber lights that I really like. Front facing camera, you can see it says Ford right across there. It looks really, really good. The intake looks awesome. You can see a good shot of the tires there too. This is a steel bumper and this right here is all metal. Now, if we climb up to the hood, you can see we have some nice Raptor decals as well as over on the side here, we actually have the Raptor badge that is part of the hood piece right here. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but you have little years here. 1967, 1969, 1971, and 1972. And I think that is the all the years that Ford won some off-road rally races with the Bronco at the time. So that's a really cool little Easter egg that I don't think a lot of owners even know about. Last to the front, we have a bunch of parking sensors, a little bit of fog lights, and it just looks really, really good in this gray paint that I have. So next, let's take a look at what's under the hood. We have a three liter EcoBoost V6 engine, giving us 418 horsepower, 440 pound feet of torque and the exhaust on this thing actually sounds pretty good also we're paired here with a 10 speed automatic transmission we also got the Haas 4.0 with Fox live valve 3.1 internal bypass semi-active dampers that's a lot of words I just like to call them Fox shocks now the as tested price for this Ford Bronco Raptor is $126,630 Canadian so you're going to pay a pretty penny for the best Ford Bronco that money can buy so next we come along to the side. This is where you really get a good look at those bead locking tires. I don't know why, but usually the trim is supposed to come with, you know, the, since I have the Raptor decal there on the side, like you can see, it's supposed to come with like some orange rims around, but I didn't get them for some reason. But when you configure it on the website, that's how it comes. But also while I'm here, you get a good shot of those Fox dampers. You can see they say Raptor on them as well. They look really, really cool. You can see how off-road built this thing is. And I mean, I have it on a gravel road and that's about as much off-roading as I can muster here in my local area. But I absolutely love this decal here. We have the antenna. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I feel like they could have hit it. I like these little side vents. They're really nice to look at. The fenders are definitely painted and they look really good. I love the look of this thing. It makes it look so robust and I almost can fit, I can pretty much fit the entire camera here in the, in the space between the fender and the wheel, which is really cool. All four doors come off. So these guys will come off and then you can also take off this step plate as well if you want. That's also labeled Raptor, but this for your daily driving use, if you're not doing any off-roading, is really, really good to hop in and out of, makes things very easy for you. All right, so next up we have the rear. Again, really good shot of that ground clearance and that nice looking suspension. Everything is protected. Also, you can see the exhaust from right here, which is nice. We've got nice tail lights. You can see just how wide those fender flares are, and I'm absolutely a fan of them. We've got a backup camera that kind of hangs out of where the spare tire is and you can see just how big that spare tire is now i do have this brake light back here but you can see how much it cuts in to my rear visibility it's, it's very interesting how they've done it um i basically you know lose a lot of visibility i'll show you that when we get onto the interior raptor badge right here you've got all your trailering controls right there so that's very good too and a nice little bronco badge and i'm a big fan of these lights they look nice so last but not least let's open the trunk here very easy to open if you've ever seen a bronco you know how you can see here that the raptor logo is spelt backwards but when i look at it in my mirror it's spelt forwards so that is a little touch that you can always see the raptor badge in your rearview mirror that's very cool let's actually open this guy up open this a bit more open him up you have a ton of space look at all of the space that I have in here. If I back up just a little bit, you can also see it says for performance right there. It's a nice roll bar here. When, when the roof is off, this looks really, really cool, easy to hold on to. Then we have like these different bags. These are for the doors, the roof panels, and I'm pretty sure the screws as well will go in here. You can fold the seats down and just have a ton of space. There is so much space. I also like that we get a Bronco little logo right there. 
on the mat. I love that. Plenty of space though for just daily use as well and also for off-road use. So you're really not gonna have any problems here. So that's gonna do it for our exterior tour of the Bronco Raptor. Let's hop in the interior. There's a bunch of stuff to go over there. And then of course, POV drive right after that. So first up as usual is the back seat for the Ford Bronco Raptor. You can see we have this nice blue material here. Even though this door comes off, Ford still put a little bit of effort into giving us some different materials, which I do like. We've got the frameless window here, which is very good. I also have this little cargo storage. So there is some storage here, despite again, the door being able to come off and disconnect. And I like that you can see a little bit of the code orange coming through here. Then we take a look at the seats. We've got like this nice suede kind of blue with this really, really interesting pattern throughout the whole seat. And the seat is entirely blue. At first, I thought it was black, but then you kind of spend some time with it, obviously. And you notice it's a very nice colored blue. And I really, really like this level of detail here. So let me use this step here, very useful for daily use to just hop right in. Let's sit down and close the door. And then I'm sitting here inside the Bronco Raptor and I've got plenty of room sitting behind my driver profile. It is a very dark interior. You can see that there's not a lot of light coming in because it's a very small windshield up there and there's absolutely no light coming in from the, the roof here. So that's one thing to note. And then also we have two cup holders still that can come down here. We have a baby seat that could fit in here. I don't have mine currently in, but you'll notice as well, we have these code orange seat belts throughout the entire vehicle not just the front seat gets them the back seat also has them which is very nice i like this little bronco logo down here no vents or anything like that but my window controls are here also i have a usb a and usb c port here as well as an ac 110 volt outlet right there as well so that's going to be very useful this says no step because i don't think it can support weight over and over again a little bit of a cargo net here behind the driver's seat and the passenger seat as well then if we turn around we can kind of see the roll bar from the inside as well as how little or how much that raptor logo really does cut off your visibility from the rear it's a good thing the side view mirrors are good and also you can see we have two speakers right there so this thing with the door off you can listen to some good music while you're off-roading yourself which is very cool so let's hop up front. All right, so next up, business and up front for the Bronco Raptor. So let's take a look. Same thing again. We have this nice blue material. Lock and unlock bonds are right here. Little storage, exactly the same thing as the back, no different. Now I do have this nice Ford Performance badge right here because this is the Raptor. So I have Raptor mats as well. Little Bronco with a carbon fiber pack, which you're seeing right now. It is mostly throughout the entire interior. So that's nice to see as well with again, that blue colored material that I like a lot. We've got our window controls right here. And then we take a look here at the seat. It says Raptor right in there, looks really cool. And again, we have this awesome blue suede mix with the orange color you know maybe not a color combination i thought what I, I would like but this looks awesome here in the bronco raptor i'm i'm such a fan of what they've done again we get those orange seat belts so let's hop in very easy to do so put your foot on that step and it's absolutely no problem close the door greeted by this really cool steering wheel so we have like the centering kind of line here because this is a sport vehicle so that really makes it feel pretty sporty actually with the orange stitching around really like that then here's a little bit more of that carbon fiber package and you're constantly reminded that you're driving a raptor and i love it then let's talk about our steering wheel controls i've got some media controls here and some media controls here would have loved to have all those just in one spot because it is confusing a little bit sometimes uh, but this is how you're going to control our digital gauge cluster which i'll show you in a second we've got lane keep assist adaptive cruise control all the standard stuff and then down here we've got an r button which is you know your basically your custom mode so you double click that and you can enter your custom mode or hold it and it'll save the settings you currently have then obviously the steering button will change the steering modes and then the suspension button same thing we can have normal sport and off-road mode so that's cool too for the suspension and the dampers and then we also have the exhaust mode which we have normal uh, baja which is it's going to say let me see for off-road use only which tells me that that is probably because the sound of the baja will actually be above the legal limit so you don't want to mess with that too much but i drive with it around a little bit and so far so good and then you can just have it quiet so if you don't want to wake up the neighbors you can just put it quiet which i don't know why you would because i like to have it in sport all the time nice blacked out bronco badge as well so let's talk about our digital gauge cluster display here there's there isn't a ton to go over like you can kind of just choose between the different views it's very much a ford infotainment or gauge cluster display uh, you can have different settings. I don't have a heads up display or anything to configure here. Uh, you know, and you can just basically configure some stuff uh, about the car. It's really, really basic. Also, but it's cool you have Raptor information, so you can have Raptor status. So it basically tells you 
what kind of drive modes you're in, your off-road status, you can have gauges. There's so much here that uh, I usually just go with the basic trip information when I'm driving on the normal road. But when you're on off-road stuff, you're gonna want like off-road screens and stuff like that. So like what the suspension's doing, different things like that, oil pressures, you're gonna want all that when you're driving off-road. So that's very useful. Now, just above my infotainment display, I have a bunch of different buttons for the suspension. I can have like a trailing assist, traction control off. I can lock my front or I can lock my rear or I can disconnect some of the some parts of the rear suspension as well, which is very cool. It's all for off-roading, all to make things very, very easy. Something that I unfortunately don't get to use because this is as good as off-road gets. It's a gravel kind of driveway or parking lot, and that's about as much as I can do when it comes to you know off-roading the Bronco Raptor. There's really no place to, to climb mountains. I'm in the middle of uh, Montreal, Quebec, so <laughs> not much place to do it. If you know one, though, suggest it, because next time I'll take it there. So next we'll move over to our digital infotainment. You can kind of have like a little screen here that you can have quick stuff access to. Settings are very basic, it's very forward. It's not the most responsive thing in the world, but it's all right for what you need. You kind of can, it actually has a quiet start, which I have to enable because I do have a child who's usually sleeping when I leave the house. So I don't wanna wake them up, so I do the quiet start thing. And you can also even set a quiet start time. So like, let's say like, you know, from 10 to 8 a.m. or from 10 p.m. to 8 a.m., it will start quietly. Every other time, it'll absolutely roar to life, which I think is actually pretty cool. You can also have Mikey, stuff like that. Uh, it's got wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, all the good stuff there. Uh, we have a bunch of features that we can go through, zone lighting, towing, driver assistance, all that stuff. Very, very simple, not a lot going on. Built-in navigation like you can see right there, but you really don't need a whole bunch for your connecting to Apple CarPlay, which is, just runs perfectly here. Then we have these cool looking vents as well that I really enjoy. I've got all my HVAC controls laid out for me right here, which I like. I've got 360 degree camera, which is very nice to have as well, where it'll kind of show you everything. I don't have any cameras, however, in the mirror, and that makes sense because the mirrors are gonna come off. So it's like sort of 360 because you get this bird's eye view. I've also got parking sensors, which are very useful when you're parking this big vehicle here. Dual zone automatic climate control, heated seats, no ventilation, which would have been nice to see. Cause I guess like my thought is when you're off-roading, you kind of want something that's gonna warm you or cool you when you're off-roading. Like if you're off-roading somewhere really warm, maybe you want like a nice cool seat to sit in. It's just kind of like a luxury thing that maybe the Raptor should have because it's really expensive. But anyways, we do have the heated seats for the winter, which is nice. We've got a nice grab handle right here too. Little bit of a pocket storage right here as well. It's like, I usually use it as storage, but it's also a wireless charger, which is nice. We've got USB-C and USB-A right down there. Nice little Bronco logo and the American flag right here on the shifter. And again, we can see the carbon fiber for performance badge right there, which we love. And then let's go over this goat mode dial right here. I've got two high, four low, four automatic, four high, and I've got the terrain mode as well. And then I'll flip through these goat modes for you. So we have normal, we also have off-road, we have Baja, which really loosens things up. Yep, four by four shift. Okay, I've got to clear that before it goes. Uh, and then we've got rock crawl, and then we also got normal mode. Uh, we've also got sport mode which is nice, towing mode as well, and a slippery mode. So all stuff that's very nice to have. I do like to keep it in sport mode or I'll keep it in my R mode, which has the exhaust in crazy mode and everything else, and the steering, I think, in sport mode as well, and then everything else in kind of just normal mode, which is cool. And last but not least, we do have a little bit of a storage compartment here that has like a Raptor with the owner's manual, very cool. Bronco badge right there in the orange again. And then you have a bit more carbon fiber over there. Passenger seat, same as the driver's seat, very comfortable. And I also have a bit of storage in here, as well as this is where my lighting controls are and the mirror controls, obviously, because the doors come off, so they couldn't put anything in there, but I like it. And also, we got this nice Raptor badge right here with the orange stitching. Gotta love it, gotta love the interior. I think they've paid very close attention to detail, and they've done, this is the best looking interior and exterior Ford Bronco that money can buy. You can't change my mind, that's what I think. So let me take you on a little road drive. Let me strap that GoPro to my forehead, and let's get into it. All right, welcome inside the 2024 Ford Bronco Raptor. Yes, sir. Look at the commanding view that we have, first of all. Those are some normal sedans. I am sitting way above them. Like, the visibility is not great, right? Like, I have that big tire there that's really blocking a lot of the stuff, but 
I do have some decent side view mirrors that allows me to see some of the back. If you adjust it right, you can see quite a bit around the vehicle. Um, you just kind of have to have that spatial awareness, right? But the good news is, is I can see the front end of the vehicle. I can see both sides. So I always kind of know where my tires are, which does help quite a bit when you're driving something this large. Like, and I also remember I had the Ford Bronco outer banks and that was like the off-road version of it as well. Obviously not nowhere near the level of the Raptor, but still last year was interesting to drive it in the winter. I remember this commanding view, but I think I'm even higher this year. It just feels so lifted. Like, I, but I really like it. And also the ride quality because of it isn't that bad. It's a little springy, a little bumpy, um, but honestly not terrible. Like it's, it could be worse. It probably, it probably was worse, honestly, in the Outer Banks. This kind of is very, very good, especially in like the normal mode. I really haven't messed with the suspension in sport mode at all because it's pointless, but I will throw her, we will throw her into sport mode. Let's absolutely wake up the beast here. Let's poke the bear because uh, this, this engine is loud. V6 twin turbo, don't get me wrong, let's go. Downshift to third and let's run it. I mean, this thing screams all the way to 100. Just scream, 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 screams. I mean, oh my God, there's no way the audio is not picking that up. Ladies and gentlemen, that's ridiculous. I mean, honestly, I don't even need to say anything. I can just let the Raptor do everything for me. Look, because of all that noise and because of that rip, I've burnt about $20 in fuel. This is 19.1 liters per 100 kilometers, and I've done almost 100 kilometers so far just on this little run that I've been doing just filming just today. So, yeah, it is a long time, all right? Like, I've had a long idle time, stuff like that. So, whoa, it's crazy the amount of the amount of torque this thing has and the amount of like sound that this thing has, but man, am I burning fuel, but honestly, you don't care. And like, look, I don't really have a place, although I could literally just turn off the road right now and be completely fine because I am absolutely massive and the tires would just run over whatever is in the field there. No problem. I could do it. Right. But the thing, <laughs> um, the road is just, just as like nice. Like this is a decent little daily driver. Like also it's so loud, like, oh my goodness. I think, I think a lot of people are gonna buy this to off-road it and I don't see a really a huge point in doing it if you don't have some off-road like fun with it, at least at some point during its life. Because, oh man, this thing just sounds so good just in like the sport mode, sport exhaust, it just roars, roars, roars. It's the roar of the jungle. I tell you what, man, it, like even on the track, this thing would be quite interesting because it does have quite a bit of power for kind of like an off-road SUV. This is probably the most powerful off-road SUV I've ever driven, but that sound is so loud. I don't even know if I want to take my child in here because I think she'd be scared of it. I think it's just too loud. Too loud for young kids. Obviously for enthusiasts like myself and probably the people watching this video, absolutely could be louder and we would love it. But oh man, when you're ripping around, like you turn heads because like when I have the exhaust in sport mode, which I normally always do, I'm like disturbing the peace all the time. Uh, and it's not something you'd expect to have from, from a Raptor and it just downshifts so aggressively. This transmission is actually really solid of like kind of figuring out what to do, but like, it kind of will like do one of those things where I know the, the Ford Bronco, I know the Ford Raptor does that thing too, where it will kind of like me, 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 but it's very loud. Oh man. And like handling is actually pretty decent. I've got everything like in sport mode right now and it's very decent. And the, the shifts are so like the downshifts are so aggressive that it jolts the car forwards when it's downshifting. But oh man, that's really fun. We've also even got a start stop button, which, you know, an automatic start stop button, which I never use. And I don't know why you would in a, in a Raptor like this, but yeah, you could use it if you wanted to, but I never do. Look, the, the handling is pretty good. Turning radius is honestly not that bad. Parking is, is a lot easier than it looks, honestly, which is probably good news for a lot of people. Hopefully you can hear me over the engine. Oh my goodness. So that's another thing is there's a lot of road noise in here because like the roof does come off, the doors come off. So like noise isolation is definitely not a thing in the, in the, in the Bronco in general. I remember the outer banks that I had, it was still pretty bad for road noise. Uh, that's something when you own a Bronco that has the, you know, the roof like this is something you just got to live with. Uh, but honestly, 
when you have the Raptor like this and it has an engine like that, I prefer it. I prefer to hear the outside more than anything else on the inside because, oh man, does that sound fantastic. Oh, it's just so much torque. What in the world? Oh man, it surprises me even now. And I've spent like almost an entire week with it. It's just so torquey all the time in sport mode. Like, whoa. Like usually I don't drive in sport mode. Usually I drive it like this. I'll double click my R button. And then like, I can also bring up my R setting. So drive mode's normal. Uh, steering is in sport. Suspension is normal. Exhaust is in sport. And of course the auto start stop is off. Uh, and that's how I drive it all the time. Like this is how I drive it all the time. Like, so let's see, we want to do a little rip here. Like still loud, but I feel like the sport mode adds another level of just exhaust note. I can also go to Baja mode, which will tell me that it's off-road only, but uh, you can still use it which does make things a little louder. And I don't know if you can hear it on the video, but I can hear the turbo going tss, pss, pss. Oh my God, I can hear it with, usually when you have music on, you don't hear it. So I haven't been able to hear it that much this week, but now that I'm really like pressing it, like you can hear it. Pss. Oh, that's such a cool noise. This is such an enthusiast kind of thing. Even if you don't drive this off road, this is so much fun just on the road. Like I'm, you know, stuck behind somebody who's doing the speed limit because they're, you know, good. And um, it, it doesn't matter because I can just give them some space, downshift, and just hear my little. Tss. It doesn't matter, you know. <laughs> so like, it's just fun. Like you don't need to drive it off road. And some people are going to own this, and absolutely, it will never see an off road trail. And I think that's completely fine. Honestly, this is really fun. Like I've got a Range Rover Sport in my driveway uh, as well this week. So it's been so hard to choose between the two because Range Rover kind of like makes things very easy and like no problem. Whereas the Bronco is just a fun experience. And I like to have fun while I drive it. So I honestly, I find myself gravitating towards the Bronco Sport because of this engine noise, because of the way it is, the way it rides, what it is, is just so awesome. And I'm just in love with it. Oh, I can't get enough. I cannot get enough. So unfortunately, I think that's where I'm gonna leave it. I do have some paddle shifters, but honestly, the transmission is good enough that I don't really care to use them that much. It's there, the transmission is fast enough when I do put it into manual mode. It's normal, no problems, no huge complaints. So yeah, it's pretty much all that I was missing driving wise. But so I think unfortunately, I'll go ahead and leave the video there. When I remember when I told you maybe a couple of videos, if you watched that I had a stacked August, this isn't even the tip of it. Let me tell you, I've got some special, special vehicles coming up and I am a fan of every single one of them and I love everything every single one of them. So if you're a fan of me and you like the stuff I put on the channel, you should be a fan of the cars coming up too. So you're going to want to subscribe, put the, on the bell notification so you never miss a new video. And with that being said, I'll see you next week. See you next car. Take care.